name is Deepak Sharma. I am your host for Enterprise Tech India Unplugged. So this is our first pilot episode. And with me, I have Kumaran, uh, who is a chief mentor for Tiny Magic. And he is the host of a wonderful show called Saturday Architecture. And I love to participate with him on all alternate Saturdays. And he produces great videos after that. And he spends a lot of time editing uh, and making it concise to uh, for the consumption of the audience. We know with the attention spans are longer. Hi, Kumaran. Yeah, thanks, uh, Deepak, for uh, having me here. All right. So, so first thing we want to talk about is that this is the pilot episode, and we want to talk about why we are creating this Enterprise Technology India Unplugged podcast. So the reason why we wanted to create, and I and Kumaran have had this discussion for a long period, was that there is a need for an Indian view of Indian point of view of what is happening in the enterprise world, and India being the back end for a lot of enterprise uh, organization worldwide, we need to have a view of what actually can work for organizations in India and how they can learn from uh, what has hap what what they have supplied to the rest of the world and how they can actually apply it internally. What's your view, Kumaran? I completely agree. And I experienced this firsthand uh, during our good old days, doing my good old days in Microsoft is when SharePoint first came up with developer machines and developers, right? Uh, the SharePoint team said uh, to develop, you, every, anybody can do it on a developer machine It's cool. you just need to have 8 GB. And I walk into the large enterprises here, the really large ones, and the developers are there sitting with 1 GB and 2 GB RAM. Okay. And 8 GB is completely out of their scope. They need to get 50 approvals before they can have an 8 GB machine. And you have a 15 member developer SharePoint team. Uh -uh. What works in the US doesn't cross the Pacific or the Atlantic Ocean. All so, right. yes, we definitely need something more, which is local a local thought process, a local point of view. We would definitely right. need that. Right. So so the way we are trying to structure this podcast is that you should be able to spend 30, 40 minutes uh, while you're driving to work or uh, you are spending time exercising in the morning so that you can come up to date with what is happening in the enterprise tech world in India and talk about new stories, talk about uh, new techniques which are available and what, what we think uh, we would, should work for enterprises in India uh, and on a broad basis. Right. So that is, that is how we are trying to structure it. And of course, uh, we will love your feedback on our YouTube channel and on Facebook. Please go ahead and give your feedback. And of course, we are going to help you answer questions. So if you have questions about how to be successful in, in the enterprise IT world today, please post them on our Facebook page and we will, in the next episode, we will try and answer those questions for you and include them in, in our discussions. Right. So Kumaran, what do you think is, is what uh, a person entering the enterprise tech world today should be focusing on so of course there are so many range of skills required but in your view what are the key skills an enterprise person enterprise tech person i'm just going to say enterprise tech person because there's myriads of roles which are there right so what are the things which you think from the skills perspective are really required uh i think it's so to begin with let's say uh, let's put it into two categories. There is this uh, fresh, uh, freshers and new people getting into an enterprise space. Okay. Right. Now, this could be either completely zero experience or it could be people who have been working in smaller companies going into a larger company. That's one category. The other one is who have been experienced in large enterprises for a long period of time. But both of them need a common skill or a common competency is what I see, and the paths will be slightly different. So the skill what they would uh, need is the ability to be agile. It's an often used slash abused word. Okay, but the key point is that uh, we got to keep things moving fast because today the business is changing rapidly. 
no company strategy lasts for more than an year or two that's the business strategy so the technology cannot take more than 6 to 7 months to come closer to the business strategy that's the reality of the business today now whether you are a two man company or a 200000 man company it doesn't matter so for people who are going from a small company to a big company their challenge would be in a small company they would have got things easily done and what they need to be cautious of is not get carried away by the in double quotes the popular practices in the enterprise they have to be cautious of that and for the people who are experienced uh hit the reset button and hit the refresh where our beloved satya nadella calls right they should be willing to hit the refresh button with respect to technology with respect to people with respect to processes and i think that's the key thing for an experienced person how often do i going to hit the refresh button i would say they have to probably do it weekly oh so 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 from your perspective of interacting with these large enterprises what have you seen is are the are the enterprises becoming more agile really or there is internal resistance or is there is there a difference between what an engineer thinks and what a manager thinks uh, how is it really happening there we have a clash of cultures it's uh, you take bangalore for example right uh, mm-hmm. you have a pub where you get a drink for 500 rupees okay right. you walk out of the pub take walk 300 meters and take a left and suddenly you are in this uh low income group where 500 is the monthly salary of somebody else correct right. so there's a real serious physical clash of cultures and in enterprise the same thing a clash of culture is happening the clash of culture is uh the business wants a lot of change it's been there forever but now it's become even more acute let's put it okay. this way uh enterprise it i would say is an icu now i would put okay. it that way right. okay unless they respond to the changes give a specific example there is a particular uh, so i was working with a company on uh, innovation change that needs to happen okay so there is uh, clusters like manufacturing uh, retail like that and then there is an org wide organization which is driving innovation now when i kind of uh, so they hired us to help with them with their innovation program and it's it's a an year long engagement now what i'm trying to kind of help them say is you need to have an organization standard but you need to enable local pockets of innovation okay so each cluster should be able to innovate at the same time you need to have an org wide standard so this parallel existence right is very hard for them to get now as long as i was in the conference room discussing it on the board the management the exec team all clapping their hands yeah we need this innovation to happen kind of a thing right now i get down to the floor and help them implement it and then i kind of say so to be even more specific there is an innovation index that's created which has particular metrics metrics like how many ideas generated how many innovations meeting happened what was the dollar saved for innovation so these are the metrics that's there now this is an org wide index and i was proposing to them we need to have also a custom specific index for each cluster where they can do a self declaration telling you know what other than the organizational practices i am doing something different and this is how i am measuring it and i spent close to 45 minutes trying to uh, convey this thought process to the Uh, head of innovation there and i was finding it hard to convey what is needed and there is that fear that exists from the head who is very motivated who wants all these things to happen but is kind of worried that each cluster will run off in their own directions right but in startups you have this culture of each one doing their thing so right. there is a clash of culture it is independence versus control stability versus growth this is the clash that's happening and that's right. the biggest challenge that enterprises face today so so you are saying that this the business really wants that innovation but it because of this clash of cultures is unable to deliver that innovation which business really requires 
for for it to flourish yes and uh, how do we have this pockets of technology have this pockets of things where a growth can happen right essentially it is like uh, if you take a large plantation you go a nursery in a nursery you go the sapling then it comes a little stronger and you grow it out there. right right uh but instead of that the mindset is you know i will make the seed go in the open farm itself okay and it's it's very hard for a seed to survive in the open environment and we don't have this concept of a nursery and a farm in an enterprise right. all you have is a farm there are no nurseries yes. right right okay. so so what do you what do you think uh, uh a new person or even an experienced person needs to do to survive in this this farm environment that where innovation is expected to be done at scale right so uh, where innovation is not expected to grow out of these small pockets right so how, how what are what are the things which which a person can do to be successful in this environment uh, to be a change enabler to be a change participant what does a person do i i as an individual what i what i should be doing when faced with this farm uh i'll do a shameless plug of uh, my company called tiny magic right and what we believe is there's only tiny magic that exists and big magic doesn't right. okay traditional enterprises wants that big magic whereas right. we say go for a tiny magic so the first thing is uh each individual depending on their tater of operations they find something in their circle of control right and in that circle of control they try to do whatever uh, execute something such that it can go to production right for example if it's a developer okay he he can try to introduce a very small feature okay so instead of trying to get a very big typically i want entire angular js across the project approval right right so instead of that he kind of starts off by trying to pitching to the architect in this screen alone can i use angular js right okay i won't do it in the main application you know but then he kind of he okay he's working in the finance application they don't want to touch it then he has to take that additional effort and walk to a lower critical application maybe it's not his team it's his next team they are working on let's say the holiday application leave application kind of a right. thing right so he walks over to that person and then says you know what can i develop this screen for you using angular js or vue.js so at a developer level that could happen at a, let's say a portfolio of applications then they can pick up one application in that portfolio which is not too risky that's right. another way so that's so, how you yeah. can create those tiny pockets. incrementally you're saying saying hey, do it incrementally do don't do so this is also some things which are talked about in the devops world which say do small changes frequently rather than big do large changes uh, or at a longer period of time so so i i see that the value in that so you are, what you're saying is that people need to develop this capability to insert themselves in these incremental changes or insert themselves into these scenarios where they are able to influence and create these incremental changes true and another thing is they need not look at as everything as completed code which will be used by 100000 employees right they need to kind of think can i get it to some 30 users in my enterprise will right. it be useful for them that's a startup mindset a lean mindset right right so that's something they could start off so 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 this is from of course the developers uh, perspective and people who are developing applications so what about the people who are managing the infrastructure people who are managing uh, the the it the the day to day it uh which is now threatened by automation right so this is there's a big fear within the the IT community that automation is going to change take my job away right so what do you think is 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 that is that really happening or what should people really do to prevent that from happening what what is the remedy for that okay so i will actually take a extremist point of view here okay yes lot of jobs are going to go away okay okay to me my personal belief is that's the truth okay right. no point sticking our head inside the ground in fact like i definitely believe that the work that's being done today in the enterprise uh i would 
go go out there and make a statement that 65 to 70 percent of the jobs can be automated just a right. question of is it in two years or five years or 10 years but beyond 10 years i'm pretty much sure that 70 percent of the jobs that exist today is going to be automated right okay right. so we have a runway of 10 years to take mm -hmm. off okay so people who don't want to take off you're gonna die it's as right. simple as that okay right so the way is it's it's reality Okay. To me, I have no doubts in my mind. Right, right. So, so, so what, this is just something which I am also talking to a lot of people when I uh, I talk to uh, the enterprise IT uh, people who are working in day to day IT, and I, so this is what I tell them is that what they are if they are working with physical infrastructure, right? They need to reinvent themselves, right? Because physical infrastructure, especially in the data centers, is going away, right? There, there would be no need for people to be doing physical, taking in and out of tapes of backup and uh, uh, managing servers and uh, data centers. Those will be done by large corporations like Google, like Amazon, like Microsoft, right? All these companies are going to run these big data centers, right? And the way those data centers are designed today and uh, for the future also, they are designed for minimal manual intervention right so so they it's not like these jobs from the enterprise are going to shift to these large companies because they will never employ so many people which are today employed in enterprise data centers so they need to really really invent the other thing which i tell them is they need to start thinking about how they will they are going to learn to code right because <laughs> yeah because yep. everything is becoming code even if it is deployment of a server if it is a deployment of a network everything you need to do in the cloud is actually code right and that has become the bread and butter to survive in in the cloud world and this is where uh, they need to start thinking like developers right and they need to start developing those skills to to survive in the in the automation world so so the other thing which actually is going to remain for a long time is that automation itself needs to be monitored right because automation cannot survive on its own right so oh. automation has so unless automation starts writing itself right uh, which we are uh, uh, at least 5 years away from machines inventing themselves right so uh, Till that time, they need to be able to understand automation, work with automation, look at it, uh, and be able to troubleshoot in the, at the code level. Right? So that is where the skills are happening. What are you seeing from, from that perspective? Uh, I, I, I would completely agree with that. Uh, Ten years ago, uh, one of the projects which we did for a long, uh, large customer uh, was uh, um, we had kind of all these DevOps in place kind of a thing, right? And we had a uh, FI load balancer there. And depending right. on the URL, I had to switch and send it to the right uh, web server, okay? And there was something in the URL was there. It was not at a server level. So it's like uh, company slash HR, company slash uh, finance. So that part of that URL will decide which server it's going to go so it was a soft load balancing so they couldn't the out of the box feature was that domain based you could reload it but not url based so we had to write a script inside fy so the person managing the infrastructure just couldn't do it and the person assigned from fi the firefall he also couldn't do it so we had to really struggle for close to two months to get the right person to write a script on that. And it was actually four lines of script code <laughs> when we got to it, finally. Right, right. Okay. So I kind of realized at that point itself that we really had to do it. And I was trying to work with that infrastructure team to kind of address the specific point that you said. Learn PowerShell script, learn basic Windows scripting in the Windows world, right? Uh, in the other world, it could be uh, Python scripts, uh, mm -hmm. for example, is actually needed. Some kind of scripting. Now, that's going to be the thing which is going to tie things up. Definitely, that's needed. Infrastructure guys have to learn that. I don't think as a choice. They cannot say, you know what, I'm an infrastructure guy. 
I don't know to write code. They have to be pretty good developers. They can't be even average developers. So for that, how do they do it? And I kind of say tiny bit, right? Every week, register into a podcast or a, a course like Udemy, which is very sweet, which gives you in five minute, 10 minute slots. Figure out something where you would spend 10 minutes learning scripting. And in the cloud world, you, the infrastructure available to learn is also easy. So that's the good news. So that is actually helping them. And I was talking with a friend of mine last week on the coding part, right, as developers, even there. So he said, you know, he's, he's working in a very small company, around 50, 60 people. And he said, you know, I have this need where uh, we track customer issues in Salesforce. And from Salesforce, I have a internal Jira system where I would like the issues to go. And uh, he told me, you know, Kumaran, it was interesting. I was able to do this in 10 minutes and I don't know the intricacies of Salesforce or my Jira system. I used Microsoft Flow and it just had connectors and I just had to do graphically click, click, click and then get that done in this entire thing. Too bad. Five years ago, three developers would have spent a month developing this code, right? Getting, pulling data from here, connecting it and doing it there. Now, literally I could see that is three persons of months of effort done by 10 months who doesn't have any knowledge about that product or technology. So even developers jobs is not insulated. Right, right. So, so I, I get your point. I think a lot of these cloud-based tools uh, are enabling this zero code based deployment of uh, re really any any kind of complex workflows, right? And which is which is which is very uh, difficult to imagine even even five days five years ago right so Correct. that that's that's really really something which is which is happening right so uh, i i think i think that is that is really really good advice i think uh, people should really take it seriously right so uh, thank you kumaran for your time today yeah. and i really appreciate you participating in these discussions and hopefully we will have a lot more discussions like this to help our enterprise engineers and managers across across India and across maybe the region and maybe we will get people from other regions also to participate and see how we can really influence them in, in their, their journey towards being successful in the enterprise, right? So thank you everyone and you can get this episode at etiunplugged.in we can you can also check out on our YouTube channel and our Facebook page. You can get it anytime, and of course, we will get get the feedback from you at all times. Thank you very much. Thanks, Deepak.